are talking about the thermodynamic class of thermodynamic equilibrium. And we talked about maximum and minimum in past class. So as we said that it's the, it's the global minimum, this is global maximum, this is global minimum, global maximum. And if we do that, uh, for this graph where uh, y versus x, and you can see that at this point of minimum or maximum, dy dx equals to 0. Minimum or maximum, dy dx equals to 0. And at, at this point, at those points, we also have uh, derived the uh, when so dy dx is zero uh, is the necessary condition okay, to be the minimum or maximum. But to determine uh, minimum or maximum precisely, we need to have the second derivative. And we discussed last class we derived it that d2 by d2 d2 dy square y d square if it is greater than 0 minimum d2 y d square less than 0 maximum right we have proved it also. and this is easy to visualize for the one independent variable if you have many many independent variables this these conditions will not be satisfied there will be some extra conditions and the way to represent the condition the generalized Perspective. We represent the condition in, the, in generalized perspective. And as we said, why we need to go for the multiple independent variables? Because our internal energy, which we have seen earlier, which is SDN, function of SDN, three dependent variables. Right? And that is actually, if you look at du equals to pds minus pdv plus mu d. Three independent variables. When we have two independent variables, for example, I have a function z equals to say 5x squared plus 3xy plus 2y squared. I have to have Minimum or maximum for z. So it is possible to have x y plane contour plot Contour plot we sort. For example, this point may be z equals to one. This point may be z equals to point five. This point may be z equals to point two, and so on. So each contour has constant z value. In MATLAB is possible. There's a comment from one two comment. In MATLAB is a one two comment you can do. Three dimensional is not visualized just like that. You have to think of the plane and other things very complicated. I don't want to visualize the three dimensional domain. But if you understand it also two dimensional domain is better. And if you say that the minima is actually here, somewhere here. So have, and you are initially uh, you are at this point, so you have to come to this point. This, this is the minima. So minima is some, some other point. And last class also I told about when we talk about the minima, we wrote in terms of x equals to x star, where maximum or minima occurs. And we wrote the Taylor series fx equals to f x star plus x minus x star f prime x star plus x minus x star whole square by 2 factorial f double prime x star plus higher order term right plus higher order term So here, for this case, this x star 
will be vector which is nothing but x star y star right at this point is minimal so at this point it has x star and y star and that's x star vector right correct yes so for the two dimensional case when you see the contour at particular point you have x star y star so we talk about x star bar so the taylor series what we wrote it should be in terms of a vector form function of vectors this here z is nothing but function of vector which is you can write x1 the function of on the scalar right the function of vector the question comes how the taylor series will be for the vectors vector of independent vectors consisting of independent variables my independent variables are x1 x2 up to xn how can you write okay let me write out for two variables if i say f x1 star x2 star what will the next terms taylor series of two independent variables any any hands yes yes madam you said something so i thought you can tell us rahul x1 minus x1 star do it by do x1 do x1 x1 cos x1 star uh, then plus x2 minus x2 star do a by do x2 do x2 by x2 equals to x2 star next higher order term these two terms are easy to write so 1 by 2 factorial then x1 minus x star x1 star x1 minus x1 star whole square do 2f do x1 square then is that over three terms yes what are three terms x2 minus x2 star whole square do 2f by do x2 square plus third term then multiplied by multiplied by multiplied by x1 minus x star into x2 minus x2 star it should be multiplied by 2 2 into x1 2 into x1 minus x1 star x2 minus x2 star do 2f by do x1 do x2 Will be x bar equals to x star plus that order. This is the Taylor series for multi-dimensional case. If you are not comfortable with this, please go back home and uh, look at Chris Dick's book, Advanced Engineering Mathematics by Chris Dick. Chris Dick's book has, or if you want to have much more preliminary book, then B S Global is fine. Look at B S Global or Chris Dick's book. He says this. Uh, uh, Taylor series of multi-dimensional case will be will be there. So with that, we can extend this for n variables. If I write f x bar, which is a vector, f x bar, which is a vector, then it is f x star bar. Am I correct? Plus, what should we write? X bar should be there. Don't no? X minus X is the X. If you say X is the only one value, right? Yeah, X bar. Yes. Then it will be a vector. It will be a vector. Yes. It will be a vector. Then 
if I say my delta x bar vector is x1 minus x1 star, x2 minus x2 star, xn minus xn star. I will give another vector, grad f, which is rho f by rho x1, rho f by rho x2, rho f by rho xn. So, can you write with this, this term? Grad f x star, delta x, because it is evaluated x star. Grad f x bar star, delta x bar. That's okay, that we will we'll talk about later. If you, it is a desert, it can't be when you want to talk about the mathematics aspect or the physics aspect, that uh, that is important. Uh, your transport stage, but the time thing is okay. We can talk in terms of inner work. We have done inner work, right? So, this is a vector, so you can just write like this. We have done it. So, whatever way. Plus, higher order term. So, for higher order term in this function, there is something called Hessian matrix. Have you heard about Hessian matrix? How many of you have heard about Hessian matrix? Only two, three, four. Okay. Let's look at what is called Hessian matrix. So you'll see now. Hessian matrix. We call this as H matrix or sometimes grad square F X bar. What is that? Do to F, do X1 square, do to F, do X1, do X2, do to F, do X1, do Xn. Do to F, do X2. Do x1, do 2f, do x2 square, do 2f, do x2, do xn, do 2f, do xn, do x1, and that will be do 2f, do xn square. And obviously, this matrix is a symmetric matrix. So, Asian matrix is a symmetric matrix. Asian matrix is a symmetric matrix. Asian matrix is symmetric matrix. Now, from this expression, is it is it possible to write in terms of Asian matrix? In terms of Asian matrix, can you write the third term? If you are comfortable with transpose, I am doing that also. No problem. Yeah. So half. There is transpose Asian matrix. Yes, yes. Half delta x bar transpose rad square f x bar star. Delta x bar plus higher order term. Am I correct? Yes. Please look into it. Please look into it. You can actually see the stuff. Is it okay? Yes or no? Yes. Hessian matrix is clear. How can I write this? So if you have this formula, you have the grad square f formula. For two variables, your Hessian matrix is for two variables. For two variables, Asian will be H X star whatever, do to F, do X1 square, do to F, do X1, do X2, do to F, do X2, do X1, do to F, 
2x2 square. It will not multiply with this delta x transpose and then multiply that, we will just see you are getting it. Yes? Yes or no? And that's why you are getting x1 minus x1 square. Here also square and here this two are and these two terms because of symmetry. Otherwise the two won't become. Right? Yes? This Hessian matrix, one beautiful thing is that what will be the eigenvalues of this of this symmetric matrix? Real values. Can you prove it? And what are the eigenvectors? We have done mathematics. Mathematical method thinking engine is going on now. Vector space is going on. Pardon? They form the basic vector. They form the basic vector, fine. They are not how to prove it. How to prove? I want the proof. Without proof, you know that. Double learning is whatever I state, I prove. Right? So far we have done. Even h equals 2 plus pb also. Otherwise, I won't go for that. I will not say you know that. I don't know that. Yes, you know that. How to prove? Hessian matrix symmetric matrix, fine. That is obvious from there. How to prove? Eigenvectors are, eigenvalues are real eigenvalues. How to prove the eigenvalues are real eigenvalues? Any idea, Rahul? Can you do from the Adjoint theorem? Have you done adjoint theorem? What is adjoint theorem? Inner product LUV equals to U L star V. Did you do, did you do that? Adjoint theorem. And what is self adjoint This is called adjoint theorem. If A is a matrix, you can write A U V equals to U A star V. And if you take a transpose of symmetric matrix, the eigenvalues will change or it will differ. It will differ. It won't differ. Okay. So, what will actually happen? A u equals to lambda u v. Okay. And u, u again lambda lambda v bar. Okay. So then, since the real eigenvectors are values are here, that can also prove. I won't do it here. So you can write it is lambda uh, uh, is u and v, and you can actually take the change, and you can see that u and v are of the are Orthogonal. So that's the way actually you can you can actually prove that. Okay. So that's the way one can actually prove. So we can say that a u equals to lambda one u and a v equals to lambda two v. Okay. A equals to a star. So what actually happened? Lambda one u v equals to lambda two u v. So lambda 1 minus lambda 2 uv equals to 0, lambda 1 what equal lambda 2, uv equals to 0, that means eigenvectors of the one, so eigenvectors. So first the eigenvectors I can write this, otherwise I can't write it. ax equal to lambda x, x might be eigenvector, right? ax equals to f, x is not eigenvector. ax equal to lambda x, x is eigenvector, right? So that's the way one can actually prove, simple proof that uh, for distinct eigen for distinct distinct eigenvalues, remember that for distinct eigenvalues, eigenvectors are orthogonal. Now the question is, if the eigenvectors, eigenvalues, if they are not distinct, repeated, can you get orthogonal eigenvectors in the symmetric matrix? Here, is, here they are distinct. That means lambda one not equals to lambda two. Correct? If lambda one equals to lambda two, can you get still the Orthogonal eigenvector for symmetric matrix. Yes or no? No, sir. Answer is yes. 
How to calculate eigenvectors for the repeated eigenvalues? We have you done it? We have not done. Have you done eigen, eigenvalues calculation? Eigenvectors in the math class? Now space? Have you done now space basis? Now space? It should be coming from now space. If you look at the now space and the dimension of now space, you will say that even with the repeated eigenvalues, it is possible to have two distinct eigenvectors. It is not possible for non-symmetric matrix. Non-symmetric matrix will be getting what eigenvectors for repeated eigenvalues? Have you done non-symmetric matrix? No, generalized eigenvectors. We have not done, but I am not talking about symmetric matrix. I am talking about only symmetric matrix. That is there, but we are not talking about chemical form or all those type of stuff. What I am saying that, even for the lambda and cos lambda 2, it is possible to get, I don't want to get all proof because the math course is there. It is not a math course, I cannot go beyond that. Uh, I love to teach math. I will, in fact, this math course, what is being offered in the department, it was designed by me, 2003. 2003, the first time in this department offered the math course. Math and methods in chemical engineering. Then, of course, I am not teaching maybe next year onwards, I will teach again. But this but the best thing is when you calculate eigenvalues, always go to the null space and calculate. Null space is the best approach because what actually it does for any eigenvalue calculation, you get like this a prime. A prime is what? A minus lambda. Okay? And null space says that a vector belongs to null space provided a prime x equals to 0. And it, what also it says that if this matrix is singular, you will get non-trivial solution. If this matrix is non-singular, you will get trivial solution. And that also comes from monsters. Okay? So many things actually there. I am not getting into much. Let's come back, come back to our, our own calculations. Okay. So we have got the Hessian matrix. The point is, we know for the one-dimensional case, f prime x equals to 0, where x is only one independent variable. What will be the equivalent case for multiple variable? What will be the equivalent case? You may say that this thing will be 0. How to prove it? How to prove it? So I got my question, right? For single, single variable, for single variable, f prime x equals to 0. What will happen for multiple variable? You will say grad f x bar transpose delta x bar should not say not but delta x equals 0. How to prove it? How to prove it? You can take delta x as under under is we are going very difficult path. I don't want to get into difficult path. Point is, whatever you have, if you can express in a one parameter domain, that means here only one parameter, one unknown was there. My question is, can we have one parameter, something called alpha. That means we have only the phi alpha, only one variable. Then you can say phi prime alpha equals to zero means meaning one maximum. Analogous to that. So can you have that phi alpha from this? Phi alpha, can we define this only one parameter more? So that you can compare and say that. And based on that, you can eventually prove that grad f x transpose delta x bar equals to 0. You get my question? This is one parameter model. This is my x domain. I am saying like that. That means one parameter you can see that. Similarly, if you have something called alpha, you can say that, okay, this is phi prime alpha equals to 0. What is this phi alpha? If you recall your two dimensional diagram, <laughs> this is your two dimensional diagram. This is your x star bar, 
okay so if you go any direction that is called d bar okay any direction is d bar so x star bar plus alpha d bar we can write x bar from triangle rule of vectors from triangle rule of vectors if you have two vectors independent vectors you can have a third vector you know that a plus b goes to c triangle rule of vectors and this is some unit kind of vector d bar such that you can multiply the alpha component kind of thing okay so what it says that is optimal okay and if you go to any other direction in this direction in alpha parameter you can get any value so my entire x bar you can write in terms of x star plus alpha d right so your phi alpha will be what phi alpha if you like in taylor series it is you can write as phi 0 plus alpha phi prime 0 plus alpha square by 2 factorial phi double prime 0 plus higher order term and alpha 0 equals to x equal to x to x star so it is satisfied so this is nothing but your f of x bar this is nothing but f of x star bar because if alpha equals to 0 it is f x star otherwise f x bar so it should be so data series we will boil down to phi alpha equals to phi 0 plus alpha phi prime 0 alpha square alpha square 2 factorial phi double prime 0 higher order term right we have to find out phi prime 0 how is phi prime 0 and if phi prime 0 equal to 0 because this is a, this is this data series will justify this is a one parameter model and you have to say that if phi prime equal to 0 there is a chance of maximum one minute one parameter model one parameter model so simple there is no vector here only one per alpha so entire thing entire two dimensional thing you are putting in terms of one parameter model we have alpha and this is the where we have minimum or maximum right what is this phi prime 0 that's my question Okay, next step. I do dumb optimization earlier. Any course on optimization? Any course on optimization? Like gradient method, conjugate gradient method, have you done? These are all basics. If you say optimization means, this is the first thing will come. Conjugate gradient method, gradient method, and all those things. Uh, we have not done. So if you do the optimization, you can actually appreciate appreciate better. Okay, so we have to find out the phi prime zero. So phi alpha, which is f of x star plus alpha d bar, which we also call as f x bar, we write this as f x1 plus alpha d1 x2 sorry x2 star alpha d2 plus sorry x n star plus alpha d in the vector i am just expanding it like x vector you can write f x1 x2 x3 up to x this is the one Remember that if it is f x1, x2 up to xn, it is possible to write df. How to write df? Do f by do x1, dx1, and then plus do f by do x2, dx2, and so on. And then if you write df by d, some other parameter, then all those things will be coming. So you can write phi prime alpha as df by d alpha. And what will be the term? df by d alpha. Tell me the terms. Phi prime alpha, not Rahul. Rahul is abundant for this question. Sorry, Rahul. Okay, you got this up. So I will ask you another time. Hmm. What is phi prime alpha? Do it by do alpha. 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 Do it by do it by alpha. One is not the alpha. One is alpha. Alpha is scalar parameter. Do, do it by do x1 df. Phi prime alpha is nothing but df by d alpha. 
It should be dimensionally matching. When you, whatever you are writing. What you write here by the alpha j? Come back here. What should you write? df by df. This you have done in computer analytics. So we will do x1 into x1 by That's only one problem. Yes. Do f do x1 dx1 d alpha plus do f do x2 dx2 d alpha and so on. So here. So straightforward. I'm not asking difficult question. If you understand this, you can understand. You can actually answer the answer this. What will be the What will be the answer? What will be the answer? What will be the answer? D F by D alpha. It's so difficult, no? Rahul. Direction, you get, uh, you get the optimum. 
you get the optimal optimal solution. Okay. So if you now look at your Taylor series, f x bar equals to f x star bar plus rad f x transpose x star transpose delta x bar plus half delta x bar rad x rad square f x star into delta x h that second term. What will you talk about now? You will say that the third term will be greater than zero for max minima or maximum less than zero, correct? How to measure that? So for minimize from optimization part, what we have proved so far, we have fx bar goes to fx star bar plus rad fx star transpose delta x bar plus up delta x bar transpose rad square fx star delta x bar plus higher order. This we have found rad fx star delta x bar it says also the relation of the uh, way where we can actually get minimum or maximum and our usual way for minimum any value of x bar it will be greater than x star bar and from there we can say half delta x bar that square fx bar star delta x bar greater than for minimum what is it this is something some matrix called h x star Asian matrix this is called Asian matrix this is called Asian matrix if this if this kind of condition actually occurs, what is the condition name? Some condition name is there. This kind of condition occurs. What's the condition name? So I can say this is my vector u transpose. This is my vector matrix H bar. It's taking some vector. You can write this as H U U. Can I write? Yes or no? We have done already. The math course, God plus. What is this condition? H U E equal U. In mathematics, up to this, okay, right? There is some name of this. Pardon? Lambda is not coming, no? Lambda is not coming at so far. I'll come back. I'll come back to you. These are not eigenvectors. If I get vectors, I can agree with you. I can replace my lambda u and you can say u and u as a norm. U and u, inner product of u and u is a norm, the length. So lambda is greater than zero. I agree with you. But they are not eigenvectors, they are any solutions. Since eigenvectors form basis, you can like. What is this called? Actually, we are getting right talk. This is called positive definiteness again. This is called as positive definiteness again. Positive Definiteness, definite pattern. So I have found that inner product H u with u greater than zero. If it is there, this is called positive definite. Then, if you look, go back to your linear algebra matrices, it says that a matrix can be called as positive definite matrix if all the eigenvalues are positive matrix positive definite matrix can be called as positive definite if all the eigenvalues are positive and a negative of the matrix is called as positive, de positive definite if all the eigenvalues are negative so in that case if the matrix A is negative definite what actually happens? All the eigenvalues of minus A should be positive. In that case, we can say the matrix A is negative definite. 
Sometimes a matrix is called as positive semi deferent if at least one eigenvalue is zero among the entire set. In that case, you can have a matrix termed as positive semi definite and similar definition will be valid for negative semi definite. So, now we have to prove that all the eigenvalues will be positive for this, for this matrix. Remember that H is a Hessian matrix which is symmetric. Okay? H is a Hessian matrix which is symmetric. So, we have to prove the all the eigenvalues are positive for the, the minima uh, of a function. So, any vector can be expressed. The linear combination of basis vectors. That's the fundamental of a mathematical chemical engineering course. And, of course, for symmetric matrix, eigenvectors are the best basis vectors because they are by nature orthogonal basis vectors. So, you can write if the Eigenvectors are u by bar. Eigenvectors corresponding eigenvalues are alpha i. Sorry, lambda i. We don't need eigenvalues for the representation. We have, we have to write alpha i u i bar i equals to one to n. U i bar eigenvectors. I can express the solution, the linear combination of eigenvectors or basis vectors. Okay. And also, we can write H ui equals to lambda i ui. Right? Like. So now, we have H u u, which is, we can write this as, that u we can write as summation alpha ui. So we can write summation i equals to 1 to n. H alpha i H u y am I correct? Summation j equals to 1 to n alpha j u j I want to have different index better always we do that we can write this as summation i equals to 1 to n alpha i square H U I U I because you know the quantum data since they are orthogonal if I and J are not uh, they are not equal inner product U I U J will be zero delta I J quantum data you have done it agreeable yes or no H U I is nothing but lambda U I right so you get summation I equals to one to n lambda I alpha I square and I am saying this eigenvectors which are orthonormal eigenvectors. We have done orthonormal eigenvectors and how to get orthonormal eigenvectors for any eigenvector? Any basis vectors can get can give orthonormal basis by gram speed orthonormalization but you know if you have orthonormal eigenvectors you can actually divide by the length you can get orthonormal eigenvectors. But any basis vectors, if you get a basis which is possible to get orthonormal basis by gram schmidt orthonormalization. You have done it. Right? So, we have summation. So, what is this? So, if it is orthonormal, that means ui, ui equals to 1. I am assuming orthonormal. So, now we can write lambda 1 alpha 1 square, lambda 2 alpha 2 square plus lambda n alpha n square, and based on our rule, it is greater than 0, this is greater than 0, and each term is having a square. It is giving guarantee this term will be zero if all lambdas are positive, otherwise there is no guarantee. Okay? There is maybe some positive, some negative, and they can be matching up. There is no guarantee. If lambdas, all lambdas are positive, this has to be greater than zero. And therefore, for positive definite matrix, all eigenvalues have to be positive. Point up here? Yes. Yes. So similarly, for a negative eigen negative definite definite matrices, you can actually have a similar kind of problem. Let's take up one example. Uh, That's what I said. If some number are negative, some number are positive, you may have. But thing is that cannot give any guarantee. That cannot give any guarantee, right? It may be negative, it may be positive, right? There's no guarantee. But this will give the guarantee 100%. 
you cannot bet. Okay, sir, all numbers positive. This can be negative. It can be possible if alphas, if if uh, these alphas are imaginary quantity. Of course, they are not. Because you know that eigenvectors, eigenvalues are real for the symmetric the symmetric matrix. If eigenvectors are not real, eigenvalues are not real. Then the question. So that gives a guarantee. What he is saying that some number could be positive, some number could be negative. In that case, you may get negative, you may get positive. You don't know. But if all numbers are positive, this has to be positive. There is no question about it. That's why all numbers have to be positive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will take up some example problem. And then finish it up. F x bar, which is x1 minus x2, whole to the power 4, plus x1 square minus x2 square minus 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 1. Generally, x star, if it is optimal, if x star is optimal, in optimization is also called as critical point. Is also called as critical point. My question is, what is the critical point? Critical point will say that candidate of optimum. It could be maximum, it could be minimum. What is my critical point? That means critical point means you know that. How to approach to get critical point? Not first derivative, rad f equals to 0. The null vector. Rad f has to be a null vector. So because you know that rad f into delta x bar equal to 0, that is an inner product. And delta x bar cannot be 0, that is that subcomponent. component. So rad f has to be a null vector. Okay. So if what is a null vector, then what is rad f? Do a by do x1, do a by do x2. Tell me that, tell me the answer quickly. Equal to 0, 0. What is first term? First term of first row. Do a by do x1. Do a by do x1. Do a by do x1. 4 times x1 minus x2. 4 times x1 minus x2 whole cube. Plus 2x1. Plus 2x1. Second. Minus 4 times. Minus 4 into x1 minus x2 whole cube plus 2x2 minus 2x2 minus 2x2 plus 2. Now investigate for what value of x1 x2 this will be 0 and 0. And of course the answer is 1 and 1. If you put x equal x1 equals to 1 and x2 equals to 1, it is coming 0. Right? So x so, so you got the critical point 1, 1. Now we have to investigate whether this will be maximum or minimum. So we we'll come back. Next class, get the grad square f, Hessian matrix, see the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues are positive, it is maximum, that will be the candidate of minimum. Okay, thanks for your attention.